What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video guys, I'm going to be covering my team analysis, all the mistakes I've made so far, how my team currently looks, and what I'm planning to do in the future. Stay tuned guys. guys so I'm gonna do a little bit of a different style video here I'm gonna jump into my laptop screen I'm gonna show you my team I haven't actually showed you guys what my team's looking like since the start of the season so you'll be able to get a good understanding of where I sit in terms of what players I have how my bench is looking etc so if we dive in um, before we jump into the players, I'll just quickly touch on my team value and my rank. So my team value is currently around 15.3 mil. As I've preached early in the season, um, I've made this a priority to really focus on generating cash early. It's pivotal in being able to afford those upgrades um, going through the year. So that's uh, pretty good. It's not fantastic, it's not the best, but it's well and truly up there with the better sides. Um, if we just quickly jump into uh, rankings, you can have a look. Uh, so some of these top teams, uh, their team values 15.5, 15.1, 15.5, 15.4. So um, my team's not up there with the best, but it's it's pretty good on average. So if we go back to my side, my rank, I'm currently 3282. Am I happy with this? Yes. I'm th about 400, 500 points behind first place at the moment. And when I look at my side and compare that to some of these top sides, I'm arguably in a better position. I'm quite happy with how my team's looking. So we'll jump into my players and how they've fared for me. First up, we have Sam Doherty. His current average is 99, and I started with him priced at 89. So he's performed 10 points above his average. He's solid, he's consistent. I can imagine he'll be pretty close to being a top six defender. I've got no issues with him. He's currently my highest averaging defender this year. The next guy we have is Tom Stewart. Tom Stewart, always reliable. He started off reasonably slow. I started the year with him instead of Laird. So that's arguably the first mistake I made this year. Laird is averaging 104, which is eight points more than what Stewart is averaging. But Stewart has scored over 100 in his last two games, and he's starting to show us why he is that genuine premium option. My next guy is Jaden Short. Was pretty poor last week, but it was understandable. St Kilda really didn't get the ball in their forward half at all, and therefore Richmond defenders just weren't able to rebound. There wasn't a lot of footy down back, and so his 71 last week did hurt his average. His current average for the season is 91, and I paid about 91 for him at the start of the year, so he's just travelling at about what he was priced at. He hasn't been a super selection, but he hasn't been poor either. Now, the next guy we have is Oleg Markov. Oleg's one that I did start with, so I did pay 370000 for him. If you look at his price now, he's 527, so he's made 157k, and he's also averaged 85. So he's been a fantastic selection for me, and definitely a reason to why I've started well this year. I expect him to continue uh, scoring relatively well, and he's probably one that I'll keep in my side around up until the buy periods. 
Next, we have Fantasia. Fantasia's been a reasonable selection. He's done his job. He's averaged 72 points, and he's made about 115-odd thousand. He's one that can potentially be moved on uh, when I've got the opportunity sooner rather than later, but he's been serviceable, and I wasn't expecting him to score much more than what he has, so he's done his job and is one that I'm relatively happy with. Heath Chapman is my D6. Heath Chapman's been fantastic. If we have a quick look at his player profile here, we can see that he's currently only 5% ownership. So huge get, and he's relatively unique. He's currently too expensive if you don't have him to get on board now. But the fact that he's 5% is really good and is in my favour. I personally think he's one of the better rookies that is around, so I'm surprised not as many people have got on board. He's probably the best defender rookie there is, aside from Miles Bergman, who we will touch on a bit later. In a year where defender rookies have been hard to come by, Heath Chapman's been brilliant, and I'll keep him around for a while. As for my bench rookies, look, we have Kaczynski and Highmore. Hopefully Highmore comes back in. Kaczynski will probably go back out this week. So my moves this week will probably contain something along the likes of strengthening up that bench spot back there, um, along with some other things that I'll get into when I cover some of my other zones. Jumping straight into the midfield, Jackson McRae, Zach Merritt, there's not really much to say here. Two premiums, two set and forget guys, and they've started the season relatively well. Then we have Tim Taranto, 30% uh, ownership, so he's pretty high. He's currently averaging 107, and he came into the year priced at 94. He's well and truly outperforming his starting price, and he's currently looking like a fantastic selection. Since Cornelio and De Boer got injured, he's spending a lot more time inside and he's getting those scores that we all knew he was capable of. My next pick is Andrew Brayshaw. So Andrew Brayshaw is one that I started with, which is quite fortunate for me because I was able to get those better scores at the start of the year. He's only averaged 92, and I selected him as a guy that I thought could average 110 this year. He's certainly shown potential that he can average this, but teams are tagging him frequently, and it's hurting his scores. Against North Melbourne this week too, I'm expecting Kane Turner to probably go do a job on him. So, look, his scores have been up and down, but it's just a roller coaster ride that I have to stick on and ride out at this point. At this stage of the season, I'm not about doing these sideways trades and, and moving on guys like him. So that's a guy that I potentially, I could have started with someone else in that position and could have been better off, but I took the risk and it hasn't paid off as well as it could have. My next midfielder is Darcy Parrish. He's also one that I started with. Since the injuries to Coldwell and Shield, he's been much better. He's playing a pure midfield role, which is seeing him score well. He's currently averaging five points above what he was priced at at the start of the year, but I think that he's only going to keep outperforming this. His average is just going to creep up, and over the next period, up until the buys, he'll probably average close to 100. The next guy I have is recent dual position status, Dyson Heppel. I've just brought him in this week, guys. So if you want to check out my recently uploaded dual position player article, I'll link that in the description below. And if you guys want me to make a video on DPPs, make sure to smash the like button and I'll get around to doing that for you. My reasoning behind bringing in a guy like Heppel is he's currently priced at 81. All throughout his career, he's been a mid-90s, low-hundreds type of player. Jordan Ridley out this week 
Against the Pies, they give up a lot of points. I think that he should be 100 plus this week and he can easily average 90 plus. So there's value there. And whilst he might not be a top six defender, his record says that he can put up numbers that would put him pretty close and he's priced significantly below what a lot of those other guys are. So he's one that I'm willing to jump on now that he's got defender status. If we take a look, I've only got the two rookies on the field in my midfield, whereas a lot of other teams potentially have four. I mean, there's not really much to say here. We've got Errol Goulden. Everyone has him. He's probably getting to that price now where you can look to offload him potentially. And that's a guy that next week I'll probably be upgrading to a premium. And then we have Finlay McRae, who I brought in last week. He looks well, he looks like he's got a decent role and he looks like his scoring could be all right. So he's one that I'm willing to ride out on the field for now. And then we have a look at the bench. I've got Braden Campbell, Anthony Scott. Braden Campbell at this stage will be the guy that will go for me next week. I'll be downgrading him to a rookie and using that cash to potentially get Goulden to a premium player. If we take a look at my rucks, it's pretty standard. We have Brody Grundy, Must Have, and Riley O'Brien. I made the choice last week to bring in Riley O'Brien as I couldn't afford to get Gorn. I would have chosen to select Gorn at the higher price if I had that cash available, but I didn't. So I took what I thought was the next best option. And I think that Riley will be serviceable He's down a decent amount on his starting price, and I think that he still will average close to or the same as what he did last year, which is that 108 figure. I've then kept Flynn around for the cash generation. I still think he's vital to have at R3, and those that punted him off to get gone last week, whilst you're getting to that set and forget, you also gave up another 100 to 150k worth of cash generation there. So I think that he's one that I definitely wanted to keep around and we should see him come back into the side this week. Moving on to my forwards, and this is definitely the weakest area of my side. We have Tom Phillips. Uh, he's been a failed pick this year. He hasn't lived up to the hype. Fortunately, a lot of teams have him, so it's not a disadvantage, but he's one that guys will be looking to move on and could potentially get an edge on other coaches that do have him. Personally, I'll be keeping him around as I know that whilst he hasn't been fantastic, his scoring potential is still higher than some of these rookies, and so I'm looking to get these rookies off the field first before I look to upgrade guys like him. Then we have Jaden Stevenson. Jaden's not a guy that I started with, and I had traded Jordan Degoe to him after round one. So I dodged a bullet getting off Degoe early. And Stevenson's been serviceable for me. He did score 50 in that first game that I had him, but since then he's been mid-80s and he scored a 90 last week. So... His role on the wing is decent. The fact he plays for North is always sketchy, but he's playing well, and I expect him to stay around that same mark so and just be serviceable for me until I can upgrade him during the buys. Nick Hind has been fantastic and probably one of my better pickups this year. I did start with him from the start, and... Now that he has defender status also, he just br brings that extra flexibility into the side. He's one that I'll be keeping around for a while longer. And then we have Warner, Tom Powell, two popular top rookies. If you didn't get these guys from the start, you'd be well disadvantaged at this point. Their scoring's been great. They've made a stack of cash. And then my last spot, we have Miles Bergman who at the moment is a guy that I've brought in this week. So if we just scroll down here, you can see what my current trades look like. We've gone Jordan Clark to Miles Bergman, James Jordan to Dyson Heppel. Now, 
I've gone with Miles Bergman at the inflated price due to the fact that he's going to make the most cash this week and he's also got that defender status now and that's big for me. Like We don't have many defender options this year and so to have one like him with the ability to score 60 consistently is just going to give great bench depth in defence, and I think his job security is pretty good now that Butters and Dersma's injured. So it's risky bringing him in considering he has the Sunday game this week, but I'm very confident that he should be holding his spot. So, and then Jordan, Jordan's a guy, he's maxed out in price now. Um, James Harms is going to be back soon, who could potentially take his spot. I think that they have Richmond this week. He could struggle. And so he's one I'm looking to move on this week. These guys like Jordan, Campbell, Goulden, Chad Warner, these guys are the ones that you should be looking to try and upgrade to premium players over the next few weeks. I think the strategy at this point needs to be one down, one up. You want to try and get these rookies off the field as soon as possible so you can get those points in the bank. If we have a look at my bench quickly, some guys I didn't mention, we have Paul Hunter, Brockman, uh, Highmore. I do have some guys that have shaky job security or they're not playing, and I will look to move these guys on. I think come the buys, it's absolutely crucial that you have your bench in great order and that all these guys are playing so you can maximize the amount of guys you have scoring on the field during this period. I will cover my buy strategy and a bit more buy content over the next couple weeks as it is important. But for now, I'm willing to just leave those guys there and probably move one of them next week. But we'll just have to wait and see what this round throws at us. Just reflecting on my overall side and maybe some of the mistakes I've made this year. So you probably picked up that I don't have Josh Dunkley. Clearly the number one forward and he's probably someone that I'm just not going to get now. Um, he's now priced at 112, so the value's gone. And at that price, effectively I'm giving up another upgrade to get him. If I was to settle for a guy like Nat Fife, who can potentially average 100, I'm also saving 130, 140K, and in doing that, allows me to then get another upgrade the week after. So I think with a guy like Dunkley now, I'm just going to have to wait until he has a poor game and, and starts dropping in coin before I can get him. Another big miss was obviously Rory Laird, he looks to be the number one or number two defender this year. My theory behind that was I just thought that Adelaide would struggle. Him being a midfielder, I thought that the rebounding defenders such as Short, Doherty, those types would really flourish this year. I thought that the added benefit of the rule changes would help these guys a little bit more than what it has. And so... I prioritised those guys over some of these guys that were in the midfield, such as Mills and Laird, for example. This probably hasn't worked out, but at the same time, I haven't been too disadvantaged as they haven't been very far behind those guys. And the other one that's probably hurt me as well is, is not having Max Gorn. I'd say the two big differences between me and the top 50 coaches is the fact that I don't have Dunkley, I don't have Laird, and I don't have Gorn, but I'm happy with the guys that I do have. I think Brayshaw still has more to offer, Parrish still has more to offer, and I'm happy with my structure and where my team's going. I'm well and truly in the hunt. I believe that I'm in a very strong position to finish top 100 this year, and I'm pretty confident that I will do it. If you guys have enjoyed this video, I know it's a little bit long, but I'd appreciate it if you could leave this video a like. If you've enjoyed this AFL Fantasy content, make sure to subscribe to the channel.
And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to say my piece. I'm so after school.